Hey YouTubers, good morning, it's Rob Muffet. Guys, I was over at uh, Prepper Popariti's channel and she was talking about the uh, top food storage items she has that she uses all the time. And I thought it was kind of an interesting video. If you're not familiar with her channel, she's got a, a nice channel. You never know what you're going to find her channel. If you like my stuff, you might like hers too. I'll leave a link. You can check her out. But she was talking about things she uses all the time. And it's always interesting to see what other people use in their food preparation, things they cook and so on. And I thought about what I have at my house, what I use pretty much every day that I buy in bulk, that I buy large quantities of. And it got to be a pretty big list. And I thought it might make an interesting video. So today we're going to go over um, as quickly as I can the different items I have at my house that I generally buy in bulk for reasons of either cost or because I want to have a large amount on hand in case something ever happens I can have some extra food on hand uh, like for food storage and when people think about food storage they usually think about beans and rice these items are a little different they're mostly things that uh, help you survive a little bit better than beans and rice <laughs> uh, so this is what people normally think of rice beans and wheat I'm talking about blueberries, baby. <laughs> uh, you can get four pounds of dried blueberries from Traverse Bay. I've tried different fruits from them. The cherries aren't that good, and some of the other ones aren't. But the blueberries, if you soak them in liquid overnight for a long time, they plump up. They're very good in cooking. What I do is, uh, since I was reading or listening to Dr. Gregor on YouTube, He's the guy who's a bit of a fanatic about uh, plant foods as a diet. And he was talking about all the healthful benefits of blueberries, specifically uh, for blood pressure and so on. And I started making me a little uh, blueberry shake with some uh, water, the blueberries, and then I put in some flax seed and a little tiny bit of protein powder and um, then maybe a tiny bit of a cooked oatmeal. I put it in the, the uh, Vitamix next day and make a little blueberry shake and it's quite inexpensive and very low calorie and it's it's very good for you and they're only $24 for four pounds dried this is a very inexpensive source of blueberries if you ever buy them uh, frozen or, or fresh in the store you can see what a big savings you would have and they're very good like I said I've, I've bought these several times from Traverse Bay I recommend them and they come in a box inside a bag and I put mine in the crisper and I keep a separate amount in a container and then just use them every night to make up a fresh batch. Also you can put them in baking and so on but I, I like to soak them and make them into a little shake the next day. Another thing is peas, split peas. Since I learned how to make finally a really good split pea soup I go through three pound bags a month. I used to buy this brand, uh, it's uh, on Amazon, I'll leave a link to whatever I can on Amazon for different food items, but this is the most, one of the most expensive peas you can get and it is extremely good. It's better than the brands you'll buy in the store, but I found that I didn't get that big of a difference of flavor. Actually, it's, it's quite a big difference, but when you add the carrots and, and the onions and a little bit of cabbage, you're making a vegetable soup. It's just not just plain peas. And the plain Goya, you can get these at Target for like a dollar six a bag. And like I said, I just take half of a bag, eight ounces, and put a carrot, onion, uh, some cabbage, some red pepper flakes, and some uh, Orrington Farms bouillon powder which doesn't have MSG into a crock pot and cook it for five or six hours and then put the immersion or stick blender into it once all the onions and carrots and everything is uh, no longer firm and mix it into a really creamy pea soup it's extraordinary I have it every single day I go through three bags a month now so I buy, buy plenty of these when I when I see them for well, a good price some of these things you're not going to be saving a lot of money but here's the deal if you buy them inexpensively and you have a large amount you end up finding new ways you can use them because you feel that like you have so much you should find new ways to take advantage of it and the perfect example is ginger 
I, I was buying it for like a health of properties. It's also good medicinal purposes. If you ever have motion sickness or an upset stomach, or if you have someone in your family that isn't responding well to uh, uh, their health is bad, they're not eating anymore. This helps them get a better appetite. It, it quells the pains and, and upset stomachs. But it's also good for many other things. And plus, it's got a nice flavor if you know how to cook with it. And what I started doing is making like a, a ginger cake. I use a uh, different fruits and nuts and seeds and berries and mix it in with the, like a half of a box of cake mix and make it in two batches and put it in a microwave. And I, I made a, midi, a video on it. I'll leave a link to the video. You can make a very interesting ginger cake. And once you buy it in bulk, you always have tons of it. And just set it aside into a smaller container. And you'll find new ways of using it when you have a lot on hand. And I put it in the freezer, the large bag. It lasts a long time. Now, I buy sardines whenever I see them on sale. These are dollar store sardines, but they're very large, and the large ones don't taste that, taste as good as the smaller ones. But if you put these on the panini grill and dry them up, and it increases the flavor quite a bit, and you have a totally different sardine. Now, that they have these that are much, much smaller, and they're, right now they're only like 88 cents a can. I buy a lot of these from Walmart, and they're excellent. They're not as good as King Oscar, but they're very good. I buy the ones that are in water because they're usually packed in soy oil, and I'm trying to get away from the soy oil. If they were in olive oil, it would be different, but I prefer not to have the soy oil. So I just get the ones in water, and like I said, they're very small and tasty. They're a bargain for 88 cents, absolute. Now here's something. <laughs> I'm going to stop buying. I bought this twice. They're excellent. I recommend them highly, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense because you can get uh, the same price for a smaller container of parsley, so you're not saving a penny. But when I buy the big bag, a pound bag, I love parsley so much, I end up using it in everything. I use it in soups, stews, eggs, everything, even grits. So it's one of the most nutritious herbs you can uh, uh, eat it. It's nutritionally dense. It's very good for you. And But you can actually buy this for the same price in those big Badia plastic containers and have the same uh, quality, I think. Although, when I put this in the freezer, I was never disappointed as far as dried parsley goes. It was always excellent. It, I, I recommend this highly, but unless you do use quite a bit of it, you might be better off just buying the smaller, uh, large uh, plastic container instead of a whole pound one. I just put my dried into this and keep reusing the container over. This is what I normally would buy. This is something I don't see on Amazon anymore, but I bought this a couple times. If I have fruits here locally in South Florida, I want to make some jello, something different than strawberry um, that you get in the store. I was using this beef gelatin. It's from Argentina. It's it's fairly inexpensive, and it's a non-GMO uh, or hormones. It's pasture-raised, grass-fed. It's it's a uh, it's proved I think by whoever approves these things, and it was a, a, a pretty good buy. But I don't see it on the link anymore. But that's something I I was purchasing in bulk, and I was doing different things with it. It was kind of fun to have. And rain, plain old raisins. Everybody likes raisins. When you see them inexpensively, I always buy uh, an extra four or five containers. You know, you gotta like raisins. You know, unless you're a barbarian. <laughs> Elderberries. I've been buying these. I, I checked on Amazon. The first one I purchased was back in 2013. I get them in a pound bag. I don't really use that many elderberries. I don't use them for edible purposes. I use them more for medicinal. They're one of the best things in the world that i found for helping get rid of or uh, reduce the amount of time you have a cold or the flu. What I do with it is whenever flu season comes around, I give all my friends and family neighbors, neighbors little jars of elderberry and tell them to make some tea or uh, make some syrup. I have some videos on my channel about how to make the syrup. But it's actually quite easy just to make a tea with a few uh, spoonfuls of berry and some and boiling water and seep it and just drink it over a period of time. 
Um, it's excellent preventive uh, for colds and uh, the flu. I recommend it a lot. And this is actually a very good price. Now, this is something when I tell people I'm trying to cut back on my sugar and you look in my closet <laughs> and I've got 150 cans of peaches and syrup with a process syrup, but I love these things. Uh, you don't have to drink the syrup in the can unless nobody's looking. But <laughs> these are from South Africa, so who knows how much longer we're going to be able to get them. The way things are happening in South Africa to the poor farmers there that are being killed. But don't want to bring the subject down, but these uh, are, are excellent tasting. Some of the best peaches I've ever had, and they're a dollar a can at the uh, Dollar Tree. I buy cases of them, and they're normally like in Walmart, the other stores, close to $2 a can, so you're saving quite a bit. Uh, flaxseed. I used to take fish oil pills because of the, uh, the omega-3 oils. And but I did read some studies about some people who were taking fish oil or getting prostate cancer, a rather severe form. And I had some people in my family that did die from prostate cancer, so I switched over to a plant source of omega instead of the pills. I still eat a lot of fish, but the fish oil I stopped taking and I used the flaxseed. One of the things I use flaxseed besides baking goods is I mentioned earlier when I make my blueberry shake is I put two big heaping two teaspoons of uh, the flaxseed in the water overnight. This helps with uh, cholesterol and blood pressure. Also it helps from getting hemorrhoids and drinking the extra water helps with kidney stones. So uh, it's, it's something because in the past I did get a kidney stone and I did get a hemorrhoid so <laughs> I try to be proactive and do things. And I think it's helping with the flaxseed. But like I said, you don't have to just use them in a, a drink. You can use this in, uh, when you make oatmeal or if you make a, a soup or a stew to thicken or any baked good. You can substitute this for eggs, actually. This is an inexpensive brand. It doesn't taste bad. But the best one I found is also on Amazon. It's a golden flaxseed, but I don't see them selling it at this point right now. I was paying like double what they're charging for this because I like the taste better. This is not bad, but the golden was much better. Now I buy turmeric and I use it and because I buy a lot of it, I end up using it in a lot of different things. You can even add turmeric when you're boiling your pasta. You put it in the water, it'll turn your pasta nice a golden yellow color. But you can put it in eggs or soups or stews or uh, if you make any uh, uh, vegetable patties or something. It's a, uh, and if you add, I learned if you add pepper with it, you increase the bioavailability of the good stuff that's in the turmeric. It's supposed to help your inflammation quite a bit. And a lot of people use it to reduce pain if they have arthritis and other things. There's a host of things turmeric is supposed to be good for. You want to look into that yourself. See if there's any contra uh, if there's any things that will interfere with your medicines, sometimes uh, different herbs and spices will interfere with different medicines. This tends to thin your blood too, so if you're taking a blood thinner, you might not want to take a lot of turmeric. But you could look into it. I don't buy a big pound bag, but you could. I found that it's just easier to just buy uh, the badia and put it in the freezer or the refrigerator, keep it last a long time. Now here's something I don't use a lot, but I have purchased a lot of it. Um, this is one of the things I get in bulk from the Mormons on the LDS people that, at their, their site. They have a site where they'll sell bulk food items and they only charge like $3 total for the shipment of the entire shipment, not per box, and which is unheard of. And they give fairly decent prices for their uh, dried and dehydrated goods and this is one of my favorite items they have the the apple slices they also have powdered milk this will last I think 12 years it's uh, and because it's something 
that I have for storage I do rotate it so I use it up and I don't let just sit, let it sit there and I learn how to use it and find ways that it's more tasty this is milk that doesn't uh, it's not mix into water as easily as some of the other brands of powder milk so what I do is I mix this in water and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight but I find it has a better taste than any of the other powder milks this is a brand I've been getting a lot of containers of this pasta sauce because I'm cheap I usually get those dollar cans of spaghetti sauce but this is the same volume and it's only 50 cents more and I find it tastes much better don't buy those brands that have the garlic in them they all taste bitter um, this is one of the better ones you can use it for a lot of things but it's best with pasta get you some little raviolis cook it in four minutes and put the plate on top of the pot while it's boiling and, and then put some sauce on top of the plate and then when your ravioli is done just put them in the pasta and you've got a meal in five minutes it's great this is the best diced or best canned tomatoes I've ever had in my life they have green pepper celery and onions no garlic and whenever I see these I get at least a dozen and sometimes you can get them for 88 cents a can they're at Walmart and people always turn down their nose at Walmart but if you look at the ingredients they're very wholesome ingredients very very few chemicals if any and um, they're I would expect to see these at Whole Food uh, they're they're excellent tasting and if by looking at the ingredients they're a very wholesome uh, can of tomatoes and it's a wonderful flavor you can put these over some pasta or some rice or something and just make a meal just with this alone this is something people criticize me for because I don't cook my own garbanzos which would be so much cheaper and fresher but I've gotten just used to having a can sometimes I'll only need a half a can because I'm just using it as a garnish and with some salad or, or something um, like a pasta salad or mixing it in with uh, with something on the fly just doing it and I don't need a whole can so um, it's one of my favorite items because you can do so many things with it you can mash them up and make it into a paste and a spread um, you can do so many different things with garbanzos um, it's one of my favorite uh, food items uh, peanuts dry roasted and salted whenever they're on sale I like to get them and have those on bulk too because they're really handy you can use them not just eating out of hand but you can use them in cooking with the uh, sauces and so on this mac and cheese I'm a big connoisseur of mac and cheese but most of my life I used the mac and cheese that had the little pouch of powder you would add milk to it or powdered milk or something and uh, I've learned different ways to make it taste edible but this is it comes with a pouch of cheese that's liquid it's a uh, sort of like a Velveeta soft uh, liquidy cheese but the pasta has a wonderful flavor and texture what I do is I buy these small bags of frozen vegetables and put them in the microwave steamer for like four minutes which is one of the best ways to cook vegetables if you want to save your nutrients I know everybody on the planet hates microwaves but if you look into it if you use a microwave steamer for your frozen vegetables and just cook them for a very short amount of time it's a wonderful way to cook nutritious frozen vegetables and add them to your macaroni and cheese with some salad olives and other items and maybe some tuna or some sausage or something you can make a wonderful quick meal it's very colorful and tasty and this is a dollar a box you might want to freeze these to make sure they don't have any weevil sometimes when I'm in the, the dollar store I see little weevils flying around the store I don't know what grain they've come from but I always wonder if they're in a mac and cheese so if you're gonna buy a lot of these you don't want them to migrate into your other food storage so you might want to put them in the freezer overnight to kill any larva if there was I don't know if they're in there I've never seen any but you might if you bought a bunch of these you might want to take a precaution if you didn't use them right away onions dried onions years ago years and years and years ago somebody was on a, on a ship some one of my shipmates we were at the, 
to a dinner table and, and then they uh, eating dinner and he just said uh, out of the blue he said never never sail on a ship that doesn't have onions it was the most eccentric thing I'd heard anybody say in a while and for some reason it always stuck with me and uh, I've come to think that he may have been right you never want to be anywhere that doesn't have onions onions go well with so many foods this is something I get from the Mormons the LDS big cans of dehydrated onions they make a lot of soups and stews and things taste so much better and uh, they're real handy you don't want to be somewhere without onions <laughs> um, <clears throat> my bag of frozen vegetables I was talking about just a moment ago you can get these for 88 cents or a dollar at the dollar at the uh, uh, Walmart and then whenever I see these I buy a dozen or more because you never know when they're gonna run out of these I've gotten spoiled I really like these because they make so many meat meals so quickly and so colorfully and tasty and good for you too I don't use a lot of meat hardly ever and but sometimes I like gravy and people say it's so easy and quick to make your own gravy well if you don't have any uh, meat <laughs> you know you want to have something to make gravy now and then you want to be civilized and uh, this is three pat pouches in a box from the dollar store from Dollar Tree there's if you look at the ingredients there's very few hardly any uh, chemical ingredients it's a very wholesome gravy mix this is steel cut oats I don't really like steel cut oats but now when I see them I buy a lot because I stopped buying the regular oats because there's a scare now with that uh, Roundup glyosphate that seems to be in all the oats. I looked up the oats I was buying, which was uh, natural, old-fashioned, long-cooking oats I would buy, and they had the long, or biggest amount of glyosphate in them, and it really pissed me off. Here I thought I was eating something wholesome and good for me for 20 years, and now it might have been something that could give person cancer so but now I read more and they said well maybe the studies are wrong maybe it could something could help people with cancer so you know in the meantime there shouldn't be any glass fade in these I, what I, the, the information I got I don't like cooking with these as much I will eat these for breakfast if but because I'm, I'm addicted now to eating oats for breakfast but but for cooking different things the other type of oat, the oat flakes are better but these are like three bucks for a can of them and since you never know when they're going to have them in the store, when I see them, I buy a lot of these. Um, but I prefer the old ones. I hope they come to an understanding about the glyosphate, so whether or not we know the or rather the regular oats are bad for you or not. I feel sorry for the farmers because they were told the Roundup was perfect for use and safe, and so that's what they used. And and it's it's not only cheaper; it helps them in their their crops because they can harvest quicker it doesn't get moldy and wet from the rain and, and so on so you don't get uh, fungus and mildew and mold that actually will cause cancer in people um, they know for sure it's like aflatoxin in peanuts is the most deadly uh, cancer causing toxin natural natural one that, that exists and it comes from moldy peanuts so you don't want moldy grain it could be very unhealthy for you and that was one of the reasons they were using Roundup so I kind of feel sorry for the farmers, but I also feel sorry for people if they've been eating for 20 years and if it was bad for us. So anyway, long story short, when I see this at the Walmart, I get lots of them. This is sort of what people think of as bulk food, and oats and beans and things. And if you need to get them, I recommend the Mormons, the LDS quite a bit. I have a video on them on my channel. And like I said, they charge three bucks for shipping for the whole amount and you can get 20 boxes three bucks for shipping and their prices are pretty reasonable and except for their milk I think everything is ready to last 25 years of course if you have beans and it's 25 years old you might have to grind them up in a grinder and make a flour out of them because they might be so hard to eat even after you cook them but there, there should be edible still after 25 years and so that's pretty good I guess this is the last one on the line here, guy, the old chub mackerel. I get these also at the dollar store. I've got probably a half a dozen videos on my YouTube channel on different ways you can cook mackerel. And in 
fact, I've, I've come up with a new way recently. I'm probably going to make another video. <laughs> Eventually, I have enough for how to make a cookbook just on canned fish. But if you knew how to cook these, they're close to a pound, a dollar. Um, they're a very low cost source of protein. And they're something that I buy a lot. I don't eat them every every day, but I do probably have one at least once a week. Guys, I guess that's it for the things I buy in bulk. I want to thank Prepper Potpourri again for sort of giving me the idea. And if you like this sort of thing, um, I have occasionally Prepper uh, uh, videos on my channel, but I've got, I've had stuff on all sorts of things every week. I have a new one. You never know what you're going to find. I've got a bunch of playlists. i got a bunch of cool people I feature on my channel. No relation to me. They all got different things they like to do. Like old Buck, if you like cooking, you want to check him out. And old uh, Brad does some cooking now and then too. We even, well, Mo and <laughs> Marty does too. <laughs> and we, everybody does a little bit of everything, I guess. But uh, I got over 700 videos, been doing 11 years. And uh, y'all come back and check out my videos. Somewhere up here on, you should have a bell you can click on. That'll let you know when the latest thing comes out. And uh, hope you like the video. I enjoy making my videos and I uh, always enjoy the idea of other people uh, having fun and learning from them. and uh, it's been a pleasure guys. Take care and uh, see you out there.